Welcome to God's Word Fellowship. I'm Gerald Santiago and we are studying about overcoming temptation. Let's pray. Father, we come to you in the name of our Lord Jesus. Father, we thank you so much for your great love for us. Father, we thank you for your kindness toward us. Father, we thank you so much. Your words are truth. Father, we thank you heaven and earth will pass away, but your words will never pass away. Father, your words are truth. And Father, we thank you. Your words are making us wise, able and strong to inherit your blessing. Father, we thank you that your words are nourishing us. Father, we pray you teach us your word. Father, we pray you grant us wisdom, knowledge, understanding and revelation in your word, your will and your law. Father, we pray you grant us ideas, concepts and insights. Father, we pray you show us great and mighty things that we do not know. Father, we thank you for answers and solutions. Father, we thank you so much for word into your season. Father, we pray you stretch out your hand to heal and the signs and wonders be done by the name of thy holy child, Jesus. Father, we thank you so much you heard and answered our prayers. Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus, we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to Jesus. We serve a good God. We serve a great God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to Jesus. Let's go to our text today. Go with me to 1st John again. 1st John. 1st John chapter 4. Let's read verse 4 together. You are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Hallelujah. Let's read chapter 5. Same first John chapter 5 verse 4 for whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world and this is the victory that overcomes the world even our faith hallelujah to Jesus say this with me I'm born of God I'm created in the image and likeness of God I'm a child of God I'm an overcomer I have overcome the devil and his forces. I have overcome the world. I have overcome sin. I have overcome temptation. I have overcome false doctrines. For greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. No weapon formed against me will prosper. Hallelujah to Jesus. Hallelujah to Jesus. Hallelujah to Jesus. You know God has made you to win. Now, people talk about being a born winner, you know, in Christ Jesus, after you were created new, you are a born winner. You are created in the very image of Almighty God. You are a child of the Almighty God. God always wins and you are his child. You always win. You win every, you win over every temptation. Right? In every circumstance, in every uh, situation, in every challenge, God always leads you in triumph in Christ Jesus. You never have to yield to sin. You can have victory over sin in every situation, in, ev in every day, every time you are tempted. God always leads you in triumph in Christ Jesus. God gives you victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Victory is your inheritance. Say this with me. Victory is my inheritance. I want you to look at these two verses. Go with me to 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 2. I'm sorry. Um, verse 14. Now thanks be unto God who, who always causeth us to triumph in Christ. Notice it didn't say sometimes, it says always. So every time you are tempted, you have victory over sin. Eh? Whatever temptation it is, you don't have to yield to it. You don't have to submit to it. You can have victory over that temptation. You can have victory over that sin. You can say no to it. You can resist it successfully. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to Jesus. Go with me to 1st Corinthians chapter 15 verse 57 1st Corinthians chapter 15 verse 57 But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ 
See, victory belongs to you. Say this with me. The victory of my Lord Jesus Christ over sin and the devil belong to me. One more time. The victory of my Lord Jesus Christ over sin and the devil belong to me. Hallelujah. You know, build these thoughts into you. Think these thoughts. This is what God is thinking about you. Right? Learn to align your thinking according to God's thoughts. And the more you do that, the more victory you will experience. The more freedom you will experience. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to Jesus. Let's go to um, Matthew chapter 26. We are uh, looking at um, um, watching and praying. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to Jesus. And uh, we are in the previous message, we looked at how we should watch by the Holy Spirit. When the Bible says watch and pray, it's not, not just talking about you know, staying awake and praying. You know, you can use that in certain instances, you know, stay awake and pray. The Holy Ghost may lead you to stay awake in the night and pray. That, that's okay, right? But what is he primarily talking about? He is talking about being alert, being vigilant in the Holy Spirit, by the Holy Spirit. Right? You are aware of what's happening in your life, right? You are spiritually aware. You are able to discern. Okay, this is a good thing. This is bad. Right? This is evil. Where is it coming from? I need to resist it. I need to overcome it. You know, you are, you are spiritually aware of what's happening in your life. By the Holy Spirit, you, you, you are learning, right? To be well, well prepared for any attack of the devil. Right? We saw a couple of examples in the uh, previous message. Let's look at uh, one of that briefly. Go with me to Luke again. Look, hallelujah to Jesus. Luke chapter 22. Here we see a discussion between Jesus and Peter. Hallelujah. Verse 31. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan has desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. So notice, Jesus is aware of what the devil is planning against Simon. See, Simon, Peter, was under Jesus' care. Hey, hold your hand here. Go with me to John chapter 17. John chapter 17. Here, you know, Jesus is praying to the Father. And um, hallelujah to Jesus. And he, he, is, um, he has been given the responsibility to take care of his disciples. So, and uh, in that, Jesus is doing a couple of things for them. Um, verse uh, 7 onwards. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to Jesus. You know, Jesus is teaching them the word. Hallelujah. Now they have known that all things whatsoever thou hast given me are of thee, for I have given unto them the words which thou gave me. So Jesus trained them in the word. And previously he says, I have manifested your name unto the men. In other words, he revealed who God is. He revealed the nature of God to them. See, Jesus trained his disciples by revealing the Father to them. He taught them who God is. Right? The true nature of God. And he taught them the word. And he prayed for them. Hallelujah. Notice verse 9. He says, um, I pray for them. I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given me. So these people were given to our Lord Jesus Christ by the Father. And um, if you go down to verse 11, he says, Now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world, and I come to thee. Holy Father, keep them, keep through your own name those whom thou hast given me, that they may be one as we are. Notice, um, as long as Jesus was in the world, he kept them by the name of God. Now that he is leaving, he is praying for them that God the Father would keep them by his name. Hallelujah. So Jesus had the care of these people, right? They were under his uh, authority. They were given to him to be trained 
in the kingdom of God so that they can serve the kingdom of God and follow Jesus once Jesus is taken up to heaven. So Jesus is watching over his disciples by the Holy Spirit through prayer. And that's how he came to know that there is an attack planned by the devil against Simon Peter. Let's go back uh, to Luke 22 and let's read that. Luke 22 verse 31. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan has desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat. He knows exactly what the devil has planned. And notice his prayer is, is kind of tailor-made for this situation. See, this wisdom is given by the Holy Spirit. This is not some prayer that Jesus memorized. This is not a prayer that Jesus, someone taught Jesus somewhere to pray. You know, I am all for being, you know, learning to pray according to the word of God. You know, you should learn that. You should memorize scriptures. You should uh, pray the scriptures. All those things are good, right? But, but what I want to point out is, this is uh, a very unique prayer given by the Holy Spirit to Jesus to fix this situation. Now, Peter, if you notice, Peter was not in a position to resist this temptation. And Jesus knows that he is going to fall. See, this wisdom did not, uh, you know, it, it's not human wisdom. This is wisdom from the Holy Spirit. Holy Ghost is showing Jesus what's going to happen. The devil is going to sift Peter as wheat. Right? And Peter... In, in that spiritual condition, right, in his present spiritual condition, he is not going to be able to overcome the temptation. Right? As a result, he is going to be broken. We can see after um, Peter denied Jesus, he wept bitterly. Imagine the kind of shame and guilt Peter would have felt doing that. See, Peter was not like Judas. Peter genuinely loved Jesus. I mean, loved Jesus. He was willing to fight for Jesus. In the Garden of Gethsemane, if Jesus, instead of surrendering, if Jesus said, fight, Peter would have stood with them and fought. You know, the reason the disciples forsook, including Peter, the, the reason they forsook Jesus was, they were appalled at Jesus surrendering himself to the, to the people who came to arrest him. Right? They ex expected Jesus to slip away like he did all those other times. You know, so many times pe people tried to kill Jesus. But Jesus always escaped their clutches. He always, you know, overcame whatever they threw at him. But in this instance, Jesus is willingly, um, you know, surrendering himself. And when they saw that Jesus is surrendering himself to, the, to his enemies... That's when they forsook Jesus. Right? They all fled. And Peter, you know, you, you have to appreciate Peter. You know, <laughs> he, he followed Jesus even after that. You know, he wanted to see what's going to happen. He basically kind of walked into the lion's den. You know, th those are his enemies. The priests and the high priests who they're trying to kill Jesus. And they, they, all that uh, inquiry was just a sham. Uh, they had no intention of releasing Jesus. They want him dead. Right? So, uh, Peter knew these things. And yet, he followed him right there. And uh, But he was not strong enough at that point to, to stay with Jesus. To say boldly, in spite of any danger. In spite of a threat to his life. In spite of him even losing his life. right? Uh, he was not strong enough at that time to say, Yeah, I am a disciple of Jesus. I follow Jesus. Uh, I, I, know, I, I will boldly say, I belong to Jesus. Now, he was not there yet. Now, he became bold like that later. After the day of Pentecost where he was filled with the Holy Spirit, he was bold, man. He was bold as a lion. He would stand before those same people and say, Yeah, this I did by the name of Jesus whom you killed, whom God raised up from the dead. See, later he becomes strong. But at this moment, his spiritual growth is, is not there. right? And he is going to fail the temptation. Jesus can see that. 
So the Holy Ghost gave him a particular prayer, a specifically designed prayer, right, for this situation. Notice what Jesus prayed. But I have prayed for thee that you fail, your faith fail not. Even though he is going to uh, deny Jesus, right, Jesus prayed that his faith would remain strong enough so that instead of you know going to an extreme like what Judas did, you know Judas realized what he did, the kind of sin that he had committed, and he went and hanged himself. But Peter did not do that. He remained among the disciples. He you know he he, he was he was waiting, right? Along with the disciples, he, he stayed together. Right? He, he didn't go off into some kind of depression. He didn't try attempt any suicide. No. Yes, he was attacked by shame and guilt, yeah, but, you know, his faith remained strong enough to keep going, to continue, right? He, he didn't come to a place where he, he, you know, where he couldn't go on anymore, like Judas. But he, he was in a place where he can continue. He, he was strong enough to continue. He stayed in the Lord Jesus. He, his faith in Jesus was intact, right? And he, he stayed with his disciples. So you can see the effect of Jesus' prayer there, right? And he was the one who strengthened the brethren, right? When, when the women, uh, Mary Magdalene and uh, Mary and the other women came and told about Jesus, Peter and John ran to the, um, you know, to the grave to see if Jesus was, you know, if what they said is true, right? He, he was hoping, he was expecting, oh boy, what's this now, right? And our Lord Jesus appeared to Peter separately. The Bible talks about that. Hallelujah. So, I want you to notice how this particular prayer was tailor-made for the situation. This is wisdom from the Holy Spirit. So, the Holy Spirit led prayers. The Holy Spirit inspired watching is what will help you. So, stay tuned to the Holy Spirit. Be sensitive to the Holy Spirit. Now, you should pray in tongues. You know, if, if you are not, if you haven't received the fullness of the Holy Spirit yet, don't delay anymore. Get it done now. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. Start speaking in tongues. It's such an important, important blessing. Right? Praying in tongues is a great blessing. That's one of the main ways of praying in the Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to Jesus. Okay. So, here we see Holy Ghost is, is helping Jesus to watch and pray and uh, in the previous message we spoke about this a little bit but we didn't go into much detail go with me to matthew 26 we see the temptation of jesus himself he is being tempted here to walk away from the plan of god for his life all his life jesus has been marching towards this moment right from the time he was born till this moment jesus and that the life of life of Jesus was directed to this particular end. Right? Jesus knew that he is the Lamb of God. Jesus knew that he is going to die on the cross. Right? He has been prepared by the Father for this very moment. Notice the Bible when talking about the cross, Jesus did not say, uh, uh, this attack of the devil is too much for me. I can't overcome this. That's not what Jesus said. He looked at the cross and he said, The cup the Father has given me. The cup the Father has given me. See, the cross was the plan of God for Jesus. That was the only way to redeem, to redeem mankind. It was inevitable. There was no other way. Yet, Jesus knows all this, right? Jesus knows this beyond any shadow of doubt. In fact, he has been speaking about this constantly to his disciples, right? And he has been teaching them about this. Notice, go with me to Matthew chapter 16. Matthew chapter 16. And look at, um, 
Hallelujah to Jesus. Verse 21. This is just after Peter declared that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. Verse 21. Notice, from that time forth, right, from that moment, began Jesus to show unto his disciples how that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised again the third day. Right? So Jesus knew that he is going to go to the cross, he is going to die and he is going to be raised the third day. He taught it to his disciples from that time forth till the time he came to get Gethsemane. Right? All the time. He is teaching them repeatedly. If you look at uh, chapter 17, right? Jesus is teaching them again. <coughs> Hallelujah to Jesus. Verse 9. Look at this. And as they came down from the mountain, Jesus charged them, saying, Tell the vision to no man, until the Son of Man be risen again from the dead. Right? See, he is constantly teaching them. And when um, El Elijah and Moses came to see Jesus in glory, they spoke to him about his death that he needs to accomplish. That was the purpose of that visit. Right? That supernatural visit happened to reinforce the plan of God in Jesus. They came to discuss his death. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to Jesus. So Jesus knows. He knows it. Yet at this moment he is being tempted to walk away from that plan. Walk away from that plan. And if he doesn't pray, he is going to be walking away from that plan. He needs strength to overcome this temptation. He needs strength from God to overcome this temptation. This temptation was a serious one. It was so tough for Jesus. You know, he, he says, my, so, my soul is sorrowful unto death. My soul is what? Sorrowful unto death. Look at verse 38. Uh, then saith he unto them, My soul is exceeding sorrowful, not a little bit sorrowful, exceeding sorrowful, even unto death. Right? And that's why he said, Tarry ye here and watch with me. Here he is talking about prayer. He's saying, Pray along with me. Right? And verse 39 He went a little further and fell on his face and prayed, saying, O oh, my Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt. I want you to notice again, this is an awareness by the Holy Spirit. Jesus knows what is happening. Jesus knows about the plan of God by the Holy Spirit. He knows that he is being tempted to walk away from it. Right? And this prayer again is given by the Holy Spirit. Notice this is not some, some uh, routine prayer that he is making. Now this prayer is specific for the situation. And given by the Holy Spirit. Inspired by the Holy Spirit. See Jesus was aware of his situation. Notice the difference between the disciples and uh, Jesus. Jesus is watching. He is vigilant. He is alert. He knows what the situation is. He knows how the devil is attacking him. He knows the plan of God. He is aware of the temptation to walk away from it. He is aware of the intensity of the temptation also. See, he is not sleepy like his, his, um, his disciples. They are unaware of, of the situation. Even after Jesus spoke to them so many different times, yet they are unaware of that situation. Right? And they are not alert enough to pray about the situation. E even though Jesus gave them a direct command saying, Watch and pray. Even then they don't have that spiritual alertness, that, that spiritual sensitivity to yield to the Holy Spirit and pray. Do you see this? You see the difference between Jesus and his disciples. Notice after um, verse 40. 
and he comes unto the disciples and finds them asleep and saith unto Peter, What, could you not watch with me one hour? And then he says, he gives a direct command again, Watch and pray that you enter not into temptation. Right? Watch and pray. And yet, you know, their flesh was too weak. Right? They, 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 they have not trained themselves like Jesus to be alert and vigilant and watch by the Holy Spirit like Jesus is trained. They just gave into the flesh and slept again. But Jesus, no. He was alert. He was fully alert. He knows what's happening. He knows the importance of being awake at that moment. He knows the importance of spending that time in prayer at that moment. He knows it. And verse 42, he went away again the second time and prayed, saying, Oh, my father, if this cup may not pass from me except I drink it, your will be done. Eh? Hallelujah. And he spent some more time in prayer, saying the same words. Hallelujah. Now, notice this. This, again, is not what you would call a, um, a devotion time. See, I believe strongly in having a devotion. There, there is a difference between um, the regular time that we spend in prayer, in fellowship with God, right? By, by worshipping Him, by praying in understanding, by praying in tongues, and, um, you know, I, I believe in praying, you know, you, you know, concerning your needs and um, and concerning what God has put inside in your hands, right? You you need to have a daily devotion of prayer time. That's different, right? And then of course you need to study, read, study, and meditate in your Word on a daily basis. You should have a daily devotion, right? It's very important. That's how you become strong like Jesus. That's how you become sensitive like Jesus. Right? That's how you, you learn to follow the Holy Spirit. How, how did Jesus get this ability to be so sensitive to the Holy Spirit, to be, to be so aware of the Holy Spirit? Because he has been spending time with God on a regular basis, daily. Right? He is trained in that. Now, but I want you to see the difference between the regular devotion that Jesus does Right, in seeking God for himself and what he is doing here. This is a strategic thing. Right? This is a strategic kind of prayer. He is watching and praying to overcome the attack of the devil against him. There again in Peter's case we see he is watching over his disciples. He is being alerted by the Holy Spirit concerning the attack of the devil against Peter. So he is Right? Watching and praying so that Peter can win, so that Peter can continue as a disciple. The devil thought he is going to finish Peter once for all. Right? But but Jesus prayed for him. Jesus interceded for him. Jesus was alert to the Holy Spirit. Jesus yielded to the Holy Spirit and he was watchful. He was alert. He did not fail in his duty. And he prayed and ensured that Peter would continue in his faith instead of giving up instead of you know ending his life he 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 just kept on moving forward and he became a great disciple right hallelujah hallelujah to Jesus so what does it mean to watch and pray it means you are aware of the directions of the Holy Spirit it means you are sensitive to the Holy Spirit. You are not watching just physically, but you are watching spiritually. You have a spiritual awareness of what is happening in your life. You are sensitive to the directions of the Holy Spirit. And you are yielding to the directions of the Holy Spirit. You are sensitive to the Holy Spirit to receive His direction, His wisdom, and you are obedient to that. And you are praying appropriately concerning what the Holy Spirit is showing you. You are praying according to the direction of the Holy Spirit. That's how you watch and pray. 
we will talk more about this in the coming messages and uh, please to share our video and our audio messages with your friends family relatives co-workers neighbors people who need the word people who love the word share it with them god will bless you and um, also send us your prayer request we will believe god along with you god will do awesome things for you uh, note down our uh, whatsapp number it's 994428332 also um send us your uh, testimonies of how god is working in your life through this ministry we love to hear from you and we will praise god along with you hallelujah and also make a note of our email address it is prayer at gwfindia.in you can send your testimonies and your prayer request either to the whatsapp number or to our email address thank you so much for listening god bless you jesus is coming soon